It's now 3.30. The uh, meeting will please come to order. If everyone please stand that is able to do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Yeah, I know. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the next thing on the item is public uh, comment, and I'd like to remind you again that um, you're welcome to make public account. Um, you're right, excuse me. You're, you're welcome to make a public comment if it has to do with policies and procedures or finances, because that is the main job of the um, housing authority. If it's, it has a, to be a complaint about a work order or anything else to do with daily operation of the housing authority, that goes to the office in writing so that they can address it. Having said that, does anyone have want to make a comment? Would you please stand and give your name and your address for the record? Sandy Gray. Okay. Um, regarding recycling, I was just wondering um, if we have, say, old computers or things of that nature, um, can housing, if we pay housing to um, dispose of these items, uh, is that something that can be done? Yes. Waste management has a sheet that they give us with um, what they would charge us mm -hmm. to pick it up. So you'd let the office know that you had a TV or a computer yeah. Yeah. that needs to be disposed of. We'll call if we don't have an actual price. Mm -hmm. We'll call them and find out how much it's going to cost. And then when our bill comes in, they have those things, items that they picked up that weren't covered. Yeah. And they'll charge us, and then we'll charge the resident. Yes. So that, yes. And I might have another one once we uh, discuss the newsletter. That's not on the agenda for tonight. No, it isn't. It's not, it's not, not on the agenda for this meeting. Okay. okay. Alice? The Board of Health usually has once a year, um, one day for the whole town, that they can bring their whatever they want to discard. Right. The church had one last year, too, mm -hmm. for $5. Okay. Yeah, or whatever. Right. To get it there. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's. Does anyone else have a comment that they want to make or a question that they have? Well, yeah. I'm going to see Darlene tomorrow, so maybe I'll ask her if they're going to have a recycle day for big items, mm -hmm. and then we'll go from there. Because sometimes it's difficult for us. I mean, it's, I know it's across the street, but to well, carry that's the what it's going to be. That we have that we would like to recycle, mm -hmm. um, which is a wonderful thing that they have across the street. I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's difficult to, you know, carry these items over here. Um, you don't think so that's right. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to the next uh, item, which is to accept the minutes of the March 4th, uh, 2014 board meeting. Can we have a motion, please? I move that we accept the minutes of the March 4th, 2014 board meeting. Do second. we have a second? Yes. Okay. Is there any discussion? If not, we're ready to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Vote two, to accept the state capital fund budget as presented. And that was in your packet. We need a motion first and then a second and we can discuss it. I motion. Make a motion that we accept it as okay. presented. Can we have a second? A second. Okay. Now, any discussion on it? Anybody have any questions on the board? Okay. No, I think most of this actually is a continuation of what we've already started because we're doing things in phases. 
Right. So the water heaters took a couple years, but now we're at the point where all our water heaters in the front of package are we own now. They're all those ASME-approved mm -hmm. water heaters, and all the rental water heaters are now gone. Okay. So we did get out from underneath that contract. So that project is complete. The only thing is the where it says active, kind of like near the top, they still, the state still needs to reimburse us $10,200 for those water heaters. Oh, that's good. They're reimbursing They're reimbursing yeah. us. Yeah. So, so what's the life expectancy of those, do you know? Well, with the Auburn water, I don't think it's as long as what it should, should be. be. But, I don't know, maybe 10 years? Yeah, I'd say 10. I think that's a good estimate. Tops, probably. And yeah, when they tops. And when they went in, it used to, they used to have two small water heaters, like 109 or 10 gallon tanks, and now we've got bigger storage. So they changed the plumbing, yeah. and eliminated two water heaters and just put one big one. So we have less plumbing in those mechanical rooms than we used to. But there's still a sufficient supply of more than water enough for the units. And we actually purchased an extra ASME water heater that's being stored in the maintenance garage up at Packachog in the event that we were to lose a water heater, like during the night or yeah. whatever, yeah. we get the plumber to come in and all he has to do is hook it up. So we actually, because they we have to order that. I know. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. takes forever and it yeah. takes a long time. Yeah. So we purchased an extra yeah. one just on the off chance. And that way if we were to need it down here or if we need it up there, because we have an ASME water heaters out here too. That's good. Um, good. Yeah, so that's okay. the water heater situation is actually in good shape. We have windows that we still need to install, but when I carried this out further, I made sure that I put like the trim boards in so that we're not just replacing the window, we're going to be actually replacing mm -hmm. the rotted wood around the windows. Good. It's really bad That's in the good. front of package hug. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be replacing it with those, uh, it's like fake. The vinyl? I don't know if it's actually. Vinyl or aluminum, it, neither one. It's something. It's not wood, but we don't have to paint it. Right. So as long as we keep, straight. yeah, as long as we keep the trim white, we're in mm -hmm. good shape. Mm -hmm. So that'll eliminate the rotted wood around the, right. the trim. But I, I actually included that in the budget and put an amount to it so we'll be reimbursed from the state for that I wanted to look at the flooring we haven't um, inspected the front of Packachog yet but I'm thinking next week we're going to do the back of Packachog but I want to start looking at the um, landings like as you come in the hallways mm -hmm. all those VCT tiles yeah. especially here and in the front of Packachog they're really worn a lot of the tiles are cracked, it makes the hallways look really Awful. bad. So I'm going to get a price on that, and I included that in the state budget, but I'm also including it in the federal budget. Mm -hmm. That's I'm in the process of doing the federal budget right now. But Those are probably original tiles, don't you think? Mm -hmm. So I'll have to get somebody in there to figure out what. Through the chair. Um, you had a water problem in the um, the room there up at Packet Truck. The, where we have community the, meetings, room? the community room. Mm -hmm. Is that all taken care of, or is that something that we're, you're looking into now? Well, I'm actually in the process of working with an architect to look at the cost of replacing the roofs, because I'm going to have to stop budgeting the roofs in these five-year plans. So he's going to quote me prices on you know, the amount of materials, the square footage of the roofs. Right. But I think part of it in that community room is up by that cupola. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've always had issues with water. And just this past week, we had some water came into one apartment that actually faces the senior center in the back. It's always been kind of wet back there. She didn't get a lot of water, and the dehumidifier took care of it. Mm -hmm. But there was some water that came in in the community room, too. Right. Not a lot of water, but there was still some water. So hopefully maintenance is going to be able to take that paneling off in that community room 
and look to see where it's coming from. Yeah, what yeah. actually is Good. going on. But that's, that's going to involve some work. Right. But right. we right. should be able to do that if the state and the federal government are picking up our bigger capital items. We can do it on our own. We should yeah. be able to do it on our own. And that way, if there is any mold, we can just pull all the insula if there's any insulation, we can just pull it all out and then start fresh. But it's not a big area. You know right. what I mean? It would yep. be that back wall. But this been, tr I mean, it actually has kind of a musty mm -hmm. smell to it up there, mm -hmm. and that could yeah. be a lot of it. Of course, it's closed up, too. You know, people, do, it's not as it's used as often as here, although we are going to try to start using it more often to kind of give it a chance to air out. Has, has maintenance checked the flashing around that cupola? I don't know that they've been up there this year. I mean, this is really the first week that we've actually had decent weather, but to go up there in the winter, oh, no. they did not. No, no, right. no. They did not go up, but they will be going up. But I know that was a problem. And mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we're. But that on cupola that. has been leaking for years. Yep. So, but we're going to need a professional to actually go up right. there and. Look at it. Well, and he's fix coming it. to look at the roofs, maybe. Right, he's co coming do that anyway. At the same time. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So most of the things on here, like if you look in like the middle of the section on this budget, actually, if you go further up the uh, 167, the 667, the appliances, mm -hmm. kitchen components, all the expenses that we had for Auburn Heights. We had an extra sixty thousand dollars in this mm -hmm. budget that wasn't spent because we were a year out. So I put all I put as many expenses as I could in so that we'll get reimbursed and we'll be able to reimburse that six eighty nine budget again okay. because all that stuff came out right out of their reserves. So the kitchen components um, we had new kitchen counters. We had a new kitchen floor, sink, countertop, wiring. So we put out some big money up there. And mm -hmm. we re replaced the dishwasher because it all had to be ADA compliant. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to get them to reimburse us through this capital fund oh, so that I can put that money back in their reserves mm -hmm. just on the off chance something does happen. That way, they're not going to be too low. Right. So, uh, right. So, all the repairs were made. Now, their big thing is going to be a roof. And that building was built in 1995, the same year the back of Pakachog and Pinebrook Court. They were all built the same year, 95. So, I'm going to start with Auburn Heights, have the architect give me an idea on that building. So, that'll be my test development. Okay. To see how much, because I budgeted fourteen thousand seven hundred and forty-one dollars, but I really didn't know how much it was going to cost. Because right. we're going to have to hire somebody to put the roof on. Yeah. You, so yeah. that was the the rough estimate. But if I can get if I can recover some of this other money that we spent, then if it's more than that amount, then it'll, it'll be covered. It'll be covered, and That's we'll get a good roof on it, and I'll get the. I'll buy the decent shingles, and hopefully in our lifetime, we won't have to put another roof. That's great. And I plan on doing that same thing <coughs> once I get this Auburn Heights roof done. Then we're supposed to head down to Pinebrook Court and start those roofs. Because of, of where Pinebrook, Pinebrook Court is located, with all the big trees, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they take a lot. The, yeah, they take right. a beating. So I figured that's going to be our next area and then the back of Pakachog, then the front of Pakachog, especially where the community room is for that cupola. And then I've got it. so we're gonna have a couple years of projects that are just gonna be roofs. Because they're I mean they're all gonna need to be replaced because we really haven't done any. Mm -hmm. I think at one point Pakachog Village in the front was done. Pat had hired somebody to do mm -hmm. the roofs there. But that's something that we're gonna need to look at again for the, the long haul so mm -hmm. say by 2021 mm -hmm. we're looking at redoing what's been done up there especially if there's any damage so 
Good job, Lori. That was the deal with the roofs. And by the, then, all the windows, we did a survey of the residents at um, the state side of Pakachog, and we turned around and we asked them if they, kind of like if they knew of anything they wanted, what would they want? Like kind of a wish list. And windows were on quite a few people which is actually a pretty good thing because in the storage unit we have, we have w windows that we've already purchased for Packachog. So the people that really wanted windows, that's where we can start. That's good. And I can say, well, this is what they requested, so, so we can yeah. kind of meet it. people's needs. The only other thing on the federal side, we're going to start look at, looking at replacing the medicine cabinets because they're all rusted out. And that's kind of like not a high-end thing, mm -hmm. but it's enough, enough of them are bad enough that I could probably get them in bulk. Mm -hmm. And that's something that maintenance can <coughs> just put them up. plop them in, and it makes the bathroom look better. Sure. And then we still have the old um, style vanities. Mm -hmm. that, well, they kind of like just have legs and then the sink. Mm -hmm. Nothing underneath. So I'm going to look at what it would cost to do bathroom vanities, that actually there would be some storage underneath. I mean, they're mm -hmm. still going to be small because the bathrooms are small, but I mean, it would be enough to put like hand towels and yeah. some toilet paper and whatever, you know, just so yeah. that there's some storage in the bathroom under the vanity. That would be yeah. yeah, so I mean, really there's, nice. in addition to the roof, uh, roofs that are going to be done, I'm hoping that we can free up money in our budget to do some of these other items so that the residents see that we're kind of moving on with the repairs. I mean, we've already done all the windows out here, the windows in the back of Packachog are finished. Well, actually, no, they were still, they're all purchased. They still have some more to put in. But all the toilets were replaced with the low flow toilet high ones. High rise? That's yeah, good. so I mean, and it took us a couple of years to get the toilets all finished, but I think if we spread it out and we're not tying up all our money, I think that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. So that's how I came up with this for the state. This takes an awful lot of planning, and I think you've done an exceptional job of it. The buildings are in much better condition than they were. And today, I believe today is your eighth anniversary. Well, I start my eighth year today. You start your eighth oh, wow. year yeah. with the Housing Authority. You could. And I think you've done an exceptional job, and I just want to congratulate you. Yeah. Thank you. So Agreed. this is the this is the state, and then we're going to be looking at the federal, too. You know, be, we need five-year plans for both. Yeah. We're still covered on the um, HUD plan through 2015, but I'm going to be doing a plan for 16 through 20. That's good. Okay. And most of it will be the roofs. Once just, this architect tells me what the deal is with that. It's just like when we have our own homes, we have to plan ahead or we're not going to be able to do anything. Yeah. So, that's but that's the one you have to vote on today yeah. so that I can submit is this, the state, if you have any questions <clears throat> about that. Okay, does anybody on the board have any questions on that? No. Okay, no, that we've, no. have, we've had a motion in a second. Are you ready for us to vote on it, Laurie? Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think no one opposed. The motion carries. <clears throat> Wonderful. Okay. Missing a page here. Yeah. Now it's my report. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. I'm just looking for my agenda here. Okay. Um, next thing on the agenda is um, Laurie's report on the executive director's report. Okay. As far as the vacancies go, we don't have. Um, we only have one vacancy at, Fe at Pheasant Court. Um, we had a transfer from a two-bedroom to a three-bedroom. So now the two-bedroom is open, and that's going to be filled with an emergency. So chances are going to be somebody from a shelter. So there's one vacancy at Pheasant Court. We just got the keys to that apartment on Monday, 
and maintenance is already in there to paint it. So I'm hoping by the middle of next week that should be leased up. Okay, so that was it for vacancies. The um, packet that I gave you, mm -hmm. yeah. the budget was approved. So you have a signed off copy of the budget. Okay, because mm -hmm. the last one you had didn't have the signatures right. from the state. And they signed for both the state and federal program because all the information goes to them. Okay, so now you have a signed copy of the budget. Then you also have a signed copy of the lease agreement with Auburn Heights. The last copy that you had of that was, wasn't signed by anybody you voted, but now you have alternatives, you have the Department of Mental Health, and you have the state have all signed off. And we ended up getting about a $200 a month increase in rent. That's great. Which, which works out good. And if we can fix their budget to put the money back, that'll be good. So now you have a signed copy of that. All the financial reports are in this packet. And this is just so, you know, whatever you do with them, you do with them. But you got them. And then the other thing is we did a lot of work already with the catch basins have been cleaned and all the invoices for the catch basins are here so that you can look at them so you know that they were done. Baker Fire came in and did the um, fire extinguisher test for all the developments that we have fire extinguishers so you have a copy of all the you know the invoices so you can see that it was done and what it cost us. The fire alarm systems were tested here in the back of Packachog. The front of Packachog hasn't been done yet, but the two reports that we got for fire alarm testing have been included so that you know that the tests were done. Right. Okay, so that's where we're at with that. The sprinkler system, the only place that we have sprinklers is in the back of Packachug Village. And R.C. Shaw came in this morning and tested the sprinklers in the back of Packachug. So they're done. So I tried to get as many of these things because it ties up a maintenance person because they have to mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. with everybody. So we try it before the weather turns and we start working outside. I tried to get as much of that stuff out of the way. As far as the lead paint, inspection. I've received quotes from two vendors. I'm waiting for a third vendor to send me a quote. But I've requested that all 59 units in the front of Packachug be tested for lead. And, sh and they'll test the exterior of the building, the hallways, the whole deal. So we'll know without a doubt or not. whether we have, and we'll get they're all certified, licensed people mm -hmm. that gave me a price. It's going to be at least $5,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. yep. But they're going to be going into each unit mm -hmm. and actually testing, it. testing mm -hmm. each unit. So we'll, and then we'll get a letter of compliance from the completion, and then I can turn around and I can turn that into the state. And then once I know what our situation is, then I can go back and revisit the notification with the residents, I can tell them, oh, by the way, we don't have any lead, and I know for a fact, and or whether we do have lead, then we're going to have to take steps to remove it. But we'll, we, we're not going to know until it's actually inspected. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the process. I'm waiting for one more quote. But it is going to run around $5,000. But once we do it, then we know. But they're saying... When I, I'm telling them it's, you know, they were built in 75, and they said, well, chances are good we don't have it because it's so close to 78, mm -hmm. but I, we really need to know one Absolutely. way or the other. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and that way, and the state's very happy with that. They're in the, they know that we're in the process of getting somebody to come in, and as soon as I get the results, I'll turn it over to them, and then we'll be in compliance with them. 
Good job. Okay. So that's the lead. I'm having um, Mark LaPrade from LaPrade Engineering is going to draw up plans of all our units. We have a lot of people that come in and ask us, ask us how big the apartments are, like what are the dimensions to the living room, and we really don't know. I mean, we don't have a drawn out plan for the apartments. So he's going to actually draw what the units look like. So if a family unit has two bedrooms, he'll be able to draw like, draw like the first floor and the second floor and how everything's laid out, where the bathrooms are, and give the dimensions so that if anybody is interested in living here, they're going to know whether their furniture is going to fit from the get-go before. And that way, I'll be able to put that on the website so that anybody looking at our website will have the dimensions and they'll have an idea that, oh, you know, the, the bedrooms are a small, but he has the exact size. This is what you have for storage. But I'll also have him, we'll do hard copies so that anybody that comes in the office asking for the dimensions will have it as a handout to give out, which we don't have right now. What's the um, cost? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know yet. Um, since sizes vary, how are you going to, are you going to have him draw every, every apartment? No. Because, I mean, there are, there used to be sketches mm -hmm. of the layouts of a basic apartment mm -hmm. um, of here in Pakachog, mm -hmm. but I know the layouts vary, the sizes vary. Especially in the front of Pakachog, mm -hmm. because they, some of them have that bench seat, window right. seat. Yes. But if he does like a, a standard first floor, a standard mm -hmm. handicap, mm -hmm. I mean, this is just to give people an, an idea, idea. Mm -hmm. because we don't know when they come in what, what apartment they're going to anyway. Right, exactly. So, mm -hmm. I mean, just to give somebody a rough estimate, well, it's 12 by 10. Mm -hmm. It's better than not being able to say anything mm -hmm. you know, other than we don't uh -huh. know. So I want to get out from under the we don't know, and, right. you know, here's what a, an average apartment looks like and then go from there because I know that the second floor at PV some of them are a little bit bigger than because they have that overhang because they have the overhang yeah. but if we can give people a general idea and then I can put that on the website we had a excuse me what's the estimated cost for that he doesn't know yet he doesn't know yet mm -hmm. but it's not going to be thousands of dollars that's for sure I, would think. I, I don't know I mean it's something that we, we really it. should have, yeah. and then once we have it, then then we've got it. Then, then we have it. That's right. So it's something that I think. What what would it come worth. out of the, the the money for it? What account? Well, it would come out of our, our regular budget. Okay. All right. You know, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's really not You're a maintenance. Have to go into a reserve or anything. It would be a sundry cost. A sundry. Okay. That's I guess because it's start. not really a maintenance. Right. I'm gonna find out too. We'll find out how much it, it's right. going to be. But he's not going to know until he actually takes a look. Right. Didn't they have plans when they drew up the plans for the place mm -hmm. and all that? Weren't the original plans kept so that for the future? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were. Yeah. They were kept. Does anybody want to go through them? No. I mean, and then it, we'd have to... They're going to be... In the big rolls, it would have to be down to something usable. Right. You know, I mean... Like a booklet or something? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Eight they, by 11. That would make sense. Do we have all those plans? Yes. They're all up at Packachug. So, uh, I... Probably kind of brought it away by now. I don't think they... I don't think they've brought it away. I don't know. I haven't really looked at them in a long time, but they're hard to look at because there's electrical, there's yeah. water, there, yeah. there's rolls and rolls of just these plans. They weren't marked. They weren't put in uh -huh. any kind of a, yeah. like they a work. tube where it says, oh, by the way, this is what it is. They're not like that. They're just rolled up with a rubber band and here you go. Oh, yeah. So, hmm. bless you. So that's like hmm. another whole... It that's not good. that's not going to be a goal of mine for this year. I'm just no. saying and tell you you can put that on next year, but you're not. I'm not taking that on this year. That would take hours and hours. I'm not doing that. Hours to no. I mean, yes, no. The, yes, there are plans, but they're I just not. I where it was coming from. That's all. Yeah. That's fine. So, 
we'll see what he's going to charge and then we'll go from there. I don't expect it to be that much. Then we had um, a smoke-free housing workshop that we did in conjunction with the Smoke-Free Housing Coalition attorney, the um, Board of Health, and the Fire Department. They came here and they gave a workshop and the response was pretty good. I mean, you know, we had some, we had some good questions. We have some um, bullying going on. People are being accused of smoking and when we have the Board of Health come in, it's, they're not finding any presence of smoke. So that's part of the problem. And we have people that are continuing to smoke, so that's a lease violation now, so that's a problem. And just a minute, just a second. And you can oh, go ahead. Okay. If she doesn't mind when somebody keeps right. getting blamed for smoking or not smoking, mm -hmm. what avenue do they take? Mm -hmm. Well, they, um, the attorney said that there's a smoke meter thing. There's actually a device that I can buy that will detect smoke. So as soon as he gets the information on that, he's going to quote me a price, you know, see a vendor, and we might actually buy the device to go in and be able to say, without a doubt, there's a presence of smoke. And then the tenant that is being harassed, we're going to go after the one that's harassing them. Okay. I mean, if the smoke -a meter says, oh, by the way, and that's not what it's called. That's my name. Whatever, right. you're on, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what, I don't yeah. know what they actually call it, but whatever, whatever they say, it, then it's like, hey, the, here's this piece of equipment. It's saying there isn't any smoke. Then you need to back off. You know, but we get the same thing with dogs. Well, this one's letting the dog go out, and the dog is crapping all over the place, and they're not picking it up. But, I mean, a shot of going around watching these dogs, you know, I mean... Right. You're always going to get that. But the bullying has got to stop. And yeah, I did um, send out letters to people that I, I felt were kind of getting a little carried away, and I put them on notice that... You can't harass or threaten anybody. It's a violation of your lease, and mm -hmm. then it, it's a it's a police action. That's right. You know, so if people feel like they are being harassed, they need to notify the police. But there's actually it must be pretty common because elder affairs are are actually sponsoring a, a program on bullying. May I think it's May twenty first. They're having a workshop on bullying with the elderly. So it must be kind of common or they wouldn't be having this. You know, so whether they're finding it at senior well, they're centers. Even with the schools, they're having it. Well, they're having yes. it in the schools. You see a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a, big, it's a big thing now. Yeah. So they are having a, an elderly bullying workshop. So I plan on attending that and, you know, to learn how to address it properly. But the attorney basically suggested you call the police if you feel that you're being harassed and you let the police know. And if they come and they don't so smell smoke or whatever, then they, you know, that's just another witness. So. Yeah, but wouldn't they notify you too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the smoke-free housing workshop was well attended and the smokers didn't come. The people that I know are smoking didn't attend, even though they were all invited. Everybody received a letter, and then some people were called specifically and asked, please attend. So if you actually received a call, then it was either because you're being accused of it, or I feel you actually are, just to get them to so come out. both ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we worked really well with the Board of Health and um, the fire department. Tess from the fire department came out and did a presentation. She also, she also went into Auburn Heights last week, Tess from the fire department, and she gave that kitchen safety workshop that they held at the senior center. Mm -hmm. She did it for our, um, 
the, our residents at Auburn Heights, the eight mm -hmm. people that lived there, actually had the workshop and, it, and they loved it. Everything I heard about that workshop, it went really well. They asked really good questions, and it, it was, and that's, our, that's the first time we've actually gone into Auburn Heights because Alternative does run that program. Mm -hmm. So yes, they live in a housing building, but they're not actually our residents, they're residents of Alternatives. But I want them to feel like they're part of our community. So I am going to try to encourage them to participate, like as far as anything in involving in the, in the community that they might be interested in. We're going to let them know what's going on. This fire safety thing, they learned how to use a fire extinguisher. I mean, they loved, they loved it. And it was like the first time since I've been here that we've actually made an effort to go in and spend time with the residents over there. And I'm hoping that that's something that we can do quarterly. Like, if I can get somebody to come in and talk about bullying, I mean, chances are good they get bullied. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. the fire piece, the police crime aspect of it. But Ann had said at one point, we really don't spend enough time at Auburn Heights. And we, and we don't. But it's something that I think we need to include them. Because if they know how to use a fire extinguisher and put a, and put a kitchen fire out, that's our building. That saves, that's saving a huge yeah. loss of life or a liability issue for them. Yeah. For them. And, and it's, it's nice to get invited to like a fruit platter and a veggie dip in the, <laughs> in the afternoon. They got a kick out of it. They had raffle prizes and everything. Oh, good. Yeah, so it worked out really well. That's good. And I figured since we got more money from them for rent, I can give it back. I can give, I can give it back. Well, That's not all good. of it. Somewhat. Somewhat. So that took care of Auburn Heights. We're going to try to arrange that fire kitchen talk with the residents of Packachuck Village on Friday if it works out. I guess they used um, uh, equipment from the Worcester Fire Department, and there was a Worcester fireman that actually went with Tess to do the presentation. So it, it worked out really, we've been working with the fire department and it's working out really well. I looked at, um, I need to have a crime watch, so I need to get in touch with the police department to start mm -hmm. formulating like fraud and elder abuse to come up with some things like there's a lot of scams that are going on. So I would like the police department and maybe the sheriff's department and the district attorney's office to come in and talk to the residents about what's going on as far as crime. It's excellent. And that way we'll have a police department piece to go along with our fire department piece. And the highway department, I'm going to plan a luncheon for them that we'll bring to them as a thank you for the help they gave us this past winter as far as with the sand loading us up. I mean, they were really good. When they came to fill their trucks, they would call maintenance, our maintenance, and let us know, oh, by the way, the roads are bad. We're going out to sand now. You know, you might want to send somebody over to get a truck and do our lots while, the, while they're doing the town lots. So that we've been working really well with the highway department. So I want to send, I usually do send something, but I'm going to send a luncheon over good. to the highway. That's good. That's good. And if you're nice, maybe they'll let you come as a retiree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, maybe. Of course they would. Yeah. I still get calls from them. Well, they you show up at the house. Yeah. Not during town time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, now that we got that clear. So I think we're moving forward. The website is about halfway done. I decided not to put the waiting list on there because our waiting list is too cumbersome. It would involve too many pages and it's too, it changes too often. But I'm going to continue to post the waiting list here so that the 
people can still continue to call us to ask where they are on the list, which works out fine. So the waiting list isn't going to go on the website, but all the um, developments and an explanation of the developments. And I, when I met with um, someone that actually designs the website, I explained to her, I want it to be, we don't need a marketing piece. Our waiting list is so long, mm -hmm. there are people that are applying for our housing that will never get housed. We're giving people a false sense of that this is an option for them, and I don't want to do that. I want it as an informational thing to let people know, oh, yes, that there is an Auburn Housing Authority. This is the board. This is when the board meets. These are numbers for the board, numbers for me if there's a problem, pictures of the development so they can see what our places look like, an explanation of federal and state, mm -hmm. how do you apply, what's a reasonable accommodation, that kind of a thing to make it easier for people to apply to housing. But I, I don't think we need to put like special events that I think want, right. I want in the newsletter, our monthly newsletter, that should be out May 1st. I was hoping it would be April 1st, but I was sick three different times this winter, so it's not going to be April 1st, but I'm targeting May 1st for the newsletter. But I think our, our town events and what's going on in housing is going to be in our newsletter, and it doesn't need to be on the website. The website is more for the general public and the newsletter is just going to be for our residents and information in-house as to what maintenance is doing, where they're going to be working, what projects they can expect to see coming down the road. And that, the posting is right outside this wall here. It's right in the hall. For the waiting list. For the waiting list. For, um, Package, package our we actually have a, a resident update in right. the waiting list. She already did um, she, the state. And we were able to take quite a few people off, but no sooner do we take them off, I get, I've got another whole stack. So it's like we're really not losing anybody, but we're not gaining. It's still around 200 people on each list. Wow. And if you do the math, we don't really lose all that many residents in the course of a year. So it, it's kind of frustrating for people when they go to apply. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to give them a false sense of this is going to be an immediate option for you. Mm -hmm. Some people come and apply here and think they're going to get housed mm -hmm. tomorrow. That's not happening. And then a lot of people come in and they want to see a model apartment. Mm -hmm. That's not happening. We're, full, we're fully rented. We, can't, we mm -hmm. don't have a place set up to show anybody what they look like. So if we can take some pictures and put them on the website, then... And in that book when you get it. Yeah, right. and in the booklet. And I'm thinking that I'm going to do an applicant handbook at some point with all the different forms in it. But I don't cool. know that that's going to be this year either, but maybe next year. So we've been, we've been busy. The Pinebrook Court was inspected. There were a lot of repairs that needed to be made, and that's where maintenance has been the last week and a half they've been at Pinebrook, because that's a family unit, and that's HUD, and that's due to be inspected when they call. They only give you two weeks' notice to let you know they're coming, so we need to stay ahead of the game. And it's important that all three of our federal properties are looking good, because Packet, uh, Stoneville had a 99 on the last inspection two years ago, a 99. Um. Packetchog in the back, I'm saying, was probably 92. We were um, written up for like buddy poles that were tied up. They didn't find anything big, but it was just enough to knock points down. And then Pinebrook Court was in the 80s. Well, I don't want any of the developments showing up in the 80s because now they're averaged together. Mm -hmm. And that dictates what we get for money. Right. So if we can keep them all so that they're kind of in good shape and stay ahead of them, 
will be better. And they put out this federal registry where they kind of tell you the different things they're going to be looking for. So I, I'm going to pull that off the internet and kind of see what they're targeting during this inspection. But I mean, if you have a cracked switch plate, they take points off of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, little things that you don't normally think is a big deal. Peel and paint. Peel and paint. Peel and paint. It, it, yeah. If it's there, it's got to be operational. So, and I mean, even with the hallways, Jurgen's been going through testing all the lights. Well, the GFIs could be fine today, but the morning of that inspection, those maintenance guys will be running around with batteries to check because it could be that it died overnight. Right. And then when HUD comes through to inspect it, oh, isn't this too bad? This doesn't work. Well, we just checked them, but if it doesn't work, we get written up. And I want all the properties to be evaluated high so that we get money. And it looks like they just gave me the 200, 2014 allotment from HUD. And it looks like we went from around 53000 to 100000 wow. So unless Some they pays. made an error, <laughs> unless they made an error, which I'm kind of not going to call them, because it's like... <laughs> But that's what they sent. I printed it off. I got to take it to the cl town clerk to have her her sign off on it. But hey, I printed it. It said a hundred thousand. Then they're going to have to owe me an explanation as to why, if it isn't hundred thousand, who made the mistake? It wasn't me. So I'm going to gear up that we're going to have that hundred thousand dollars to spend, and that's where our new roofs and medicine cabinets and vanities. That's where that money's going to come from. Fantastic. You know, so we're moving, we're moving forward. But if you don't see maintenance, it's not that they aren't working. They're just not working here. We're going to get those other properties moving because moving, they, weren't, they weren't rated as high as this one was. And we have five properties. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's just package in here, and it's not true. We have five facilities that we have to take care of. Mm -hmm. So, that's my report. Excellent report. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything you want to say? No, uh, no, no. Wow. Okay, does the members have any items they want to discuss? I do. Wayne? Um, at this selectman's meeting, um, there was a selectman that had brought up about looking in to have um, JB as a housing complex. Um, I know that Ian and Laurie had spoke to me about this prior to mm -hmm. last night's meeting and I just think that um, as director and as um, members of the housing that maybe we should try to get together with the town and have discussions on doing something like that. But the thing that kind of bothered me though was um, it seemed to be, not with the housing itself and not with the project itself, I agree with it, and I think it's a thing that we should move forward to within town if it can be done. Mm -hmm. But is um, the person that made the statement was talking about the seniors and stuff like that, and it kind of bothered me because, as people know, I'm the counseling chairman up at the senior center, mm -hmm. but I never see this person going up there. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to talk, about seniors and say things, please. If you're gonna talk, do the walk. Okay. I mean, show up and more than happy to, mm -hmm. people are up there more than happy to take you around and stuff, but I mean, you're not being seen, please go up there and be seen. Now, Wayne. Yes. The school committee has mm -hmm. to decide, the school committee has to vote mm -hmm. first. Right. To make it surplus. Mm -hmm. To make it right. surplus. So before yeah. anything can happen, the it falls on the school committee right. to decide to what they want to do. Absolutely correct. And then it's up to the town. Is that a town meeting thing? After it turns over to surplus, it goes, yeah. The school department has to turn it over to the town first before okay. the town can do anything. Right. The town can't do anything until the school committee votes on it. Now, when but, I mean, I is the school committee going to even decide? We don't. There has been no discussion yeah. on when we're going to vote on it. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't want to give you a date because you don't have one. I don't have one. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. I was just kind of surprised the way it was taken out of. Yeah. Contents. And, and what's the process as far as we're concerned if that happens? Oh. There's there's a long process with that. A long happens. years and years and years. Because renovations. But I had met with Jim McGovern at one point about additional housing mm -hmm. for us. And he said he would help us in any way he could. He told me that's good. You know, so, I mean, the school committee needs to decide what they're going to do with the two schools. Right. And then the town needs to decide what they want to do. But we haven't met our affordable housing right. limit right. for the town. We're supposed to be at 10%. Last I knew, we were at 6 are we still at six? I didn't think it was even that high. Last I knew, it was not even four percent. I was believe it's I don't know. Four. I don't know. I can't answer that. Who know. would know that? Julie. Adam Bernie would know. Adam Bernie. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll ask him. It's just a. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, because you who you said. Adam Bernie. Okay. But we're supposed to be at ten. Yeah. By law. So, if. Were that low, then that'll be an incentive for the town, mm -hmm. maybe. Oh, it's an incentive for the town, but it's also an incentive for the town to sell the property right. and give back to the town in other ways, or hopefully the taxpayers for a change. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I don't know the answer now and until I hear everything coming across the board as a school yeah. committee member. I'm is, not going to decide, and as a housing authority, I'm open to any suggestions. Right. Now, is there asbestos in those buildings? I don't know. Maybe JB, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm not going to answer that. Right. You don't know. Yeah, let's leave that So it wasn't anything that somebody, oh, by the way, we've got a big asbestos problem. No, nobody. Okay. No. So, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider, lots but. Lots and lots and lots. It's going to be a whole big, a whole Gee. big deal. Yeah. But, I mean, I like the idea of Julia Bancroft because it's right down the street from mm -hmm. us. It's on the same bus route, which mm -hmm. that's something that HUD looks for right. when they go to look, to put a development in. They want it to be accessible mm -hmm. to residents, whereas Mary D is like in the middle of a neighborhood, a neighborhood right. Right. in the center of town where no buses are ever going to go. I never want to see Mary, Mary D go anyway. <laughs> no. um, may I ask a question? Why are they talking about getting rid of schools and building a brand new one out there in West Urban? Why are they planning on getting rid of them? The new middle yeah. school. Yeah, they're building a new middle school. Why and then should we get rid of these two if we need more schools? What they're going to do is they're going to take them two offline and revamp the middle school and put them in there, the old middle school. Yeah. That's where they're at now. And as far as the new middle school, is going to be for the middle school children. Go ahead. I don't understand why they're getting well, rid of perfectly good buildings and putting they're, up another one. They're old buildings. They're not perfectly. No. They're old buildings. Well, good buildings, <laughs> as far as that goes. My mother went to Mary D. Stone School. So I mean, between. <laughs> I did too. So there you go. <laughs> and it was Didn't brand you? new then. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, far be it for me to speak no, to the school committee member sitting here, but, um, you know, the existing middle school apparently has been overcrowded for a number of years. And so well, too, to yeah. facilitate the number of students in that school and the type of building and curriculum that they need, at that level these days, that's why they're building the new one in West Harvard. And then the current middle school, they're going to rehabilitate it into Hopefully I think that yeah. what grades three, four and five I think. Yeah. Which would bring which would give an opportunity Offline. for those students to have a move into that building. And that Correct. would free up those two properties, the older ones, the oldest ones, right? Right. Julia Bancroft and, and Mary Stone Day. would be taken offline because they'd no longer be used. There's a lot of votes, to be honest with you, they have not it's been taken process. place yet. Right. So we can't mm -hmm. give you a... Right. It's a very long process. But I wanted it put out there that, oh, by the way, just on the back burner, if we could actually make housing, right. I think it would be a good thing. Well, that's why I brought it up, because I wanted 
let people know that you you've already discussed it. And mm -hmm. I, did, I had it. a conversation oh. with Jim McGovern about it. Oh, you've talked to me about it. Ann has talked to me about it. Mm -hmm. Just let him finish, okay? I'm all set. Thank oh, you. Okay. Unless. No, I was just going to say, you know, as as most of you know, when I first got elected three years ago, that was one of my mm -hmm. issues because of having worked here. I know there's a huge need for housing, mm -hmm. and as people mm -hmm. our age continue to age, there's just going to be a greater need for housing mm -hmm. because the mm -hmm. population is getting older. You know, and a lot of us felt that the former high school, the 1935 high school, would have been a wonderful opportunity mm -hmm. for the town mm -hmm. right. to have a housing, and that would have been so centrally located, so near services, the mm -hmm. library, you know, McDonald's. the post office, Absolutely. banking, McDonald's, for yeah. coffee in the morning, but it would have been so centrally located, the buses go right by there, you know, it would have been a wonderful opportunity, a lost opportunity. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, another thing that I had wanted to bring up um, when it's appropriate, and maybe this might be the appropriate time, um, while you're looking at opportunities for us to acquire properties for additional housing, one of the things that the selectmen have got the town manager working on now is an inventory of the properties that are tax title properties that the town yeah. has acquired over the years that are in tax title and they're looking for ways to dispose of tax title property. And that's one of the town manager's goals for this year. So I'm not saying it would work out, but possibly it could work out. And I think it might be worth a conversation at least to find out what properties they've taken yeah. in. It's not just residential. They have commercial properties in the inventory as well. Well, they do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of the residential properties they were talking about were just little pieces on butters. Yes. That but they can't have, be used for anything. No, but they have some commercial properties that they, they've acquired through tax title, right. through foreclosures, and through, you know, they've taken four taxes um, over the years. And it's become quite a large inventory of properties. And so it might be something, since they're trying to divest, divest themselves mm -hmm. of properties, it might be worth at least looking into. You can't hurt to ask. Right. No. If you don't ask, you don't know. That's my feeling. Right. And if know? they know that we're actually looking for mm -hmm. additional housing. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a good opportunity for us to possibly have a partnership between the, the town and the housing oh, authority. No doubt. You know, at least I think it's worth exploring. Mm -hmm. and I agree. from everything I've heard, in the conversation that I did have with Julie, th that's something that she would help us, because right. she would have to help us yeah. with that. And the more and advocates the you would have, have to help us too, from the federal. You know, you know the, the more have. advocates you have, the better off you are. I talked yep. to Jim McGovern when I first got elected, and mm -hmm. you know, and he's always been an advocate for housing. You know, he mm -hmm. was very involved in that 202 program that the Kateri, um Oh, yeah. That the Kateri Housing built up there behind the North American Martyrs Church. Jim McGovern was with them every step of the way. And he thought we were actually going to be managing that. Most people did. Housing. Right. Not they used our mission statement. Right. They used our waiting list numbers. Right. And then they hired a private property manager. And then they hired property. a private property manager. So we got the pipe, basically. Well, if you mm. want to put it that way, I guess. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I just think it's it. worth, I just think <laughs> both of those are a great mm -hmm. opportunity to look into, you know, for the mm -hmm. future. And I'm still not giving up on the property next door. I'm not giving up on that. You know, that's something that they had wanted to, do you remember a few oh, years yeah. ago? Oh, yep. That when it first started. Right, they wanted yeah. to, they were going to build a smaller residence across the street mm -hmm. on the St. Joseph's property for the priests to reside in. And they were trying to sell that property right next door here. Mm -hmm. How much better? How much better located? Still on your bus route, and it's very easy to manage because it's right next door. We could have built a cantery yeah. right in the back there, and we have them exactly. landlocked. Exactly, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it would have been a fabulous opportunity. I think mm -hmm. who better, who better, and who more likely to mm -hmm. acquire that property than the housing authority? We did talk. But about the that. only thing with that is, we can't use our current housing budget to fund it. I understand so that, we'd but have there's to, got to be a creative way to We find have to form mm -hmm. a non-profit yep. and get somebody to partner with us. Right. We need a benefactor. That's what we need. We need a benefactor. Yes. Be we need a 5013C and we need a benefactor. Right. And, I mean, that would have been the perfect oh, spot. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the um, old church, I'm, I mean, needs... To come, come, come down, yeah. yes. Come down. And that's I mean, going to be full of asbestos. That's yeah. going to be oh, full. Yeah, it is. But yeah. I'm still, oh, I'm still not time. giving up on it. Mm -hmm. But I we just, did, we did discuss things with them before. But yeah. you know what? Even if it stays the way it is, there's a piece of land mm -hmm. 
in the back there. Back side, yep. Yeah, right. yeah, there is a piece of right. land that we have them landlocked, so it's right. where on where they are but is on three sides. Right. Yeah. So I mean it makes more sense to sell it to us by taking it by eminent domain, which we can actually do. But just, we need know, to have a partner mm -hmm. to I do just it. think we need to keep our options open and keep our eyes mm -hmm. open oh, and, no and have a dialogue. I mean mm -hmm. Nothing ventured, nothing even. Right? But I have enough people to fill all these tax title properties. I know. Plus, and then some. Yeah. Exactly. Plus over here. I know. Plus Julia Bancroft and then some. And then we could market our developments. Because we'd be giving people like, oh, by the way, you actually have a chance to live here. Right. I just don't think we should turn our ear on anything. No, no, no. no. And I think I the more people that know that we're interested in doing this, mm -hmm. I think the better off we're going right. to be. We need people to start speaking about right. housing. And then we have been looking at this for years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. And well, now we're moving in the direction and it's moving. Maybe we give it a little boop. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and this is the thing. But if people know that this is, this is one of our goals is to do something about our waiting list, I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. And with all your political connections, I mean, you're on every channel. Jesus, come on now. Give me a break. I'm trying to get off them channels. You should be able to help us out. Yeah, I'm willing to help anybody. Well, there you go. Okay. So that's it. Does any other member have anything they want to discuss? Okay, then we'll move back on to public comment. Does anyone have anything that was said at this meeting that you would like to comment on? If you do, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. No? No comments? Nope. Okay, then I'm, I'm ready for a... Um, I make a motion to adjourn. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we need to set a date, though. Oh, yeah, i got to talk to you about that. Uh-oh. All right, you made a motion. We, we haven't adjourned yet. Made a no, motion. we haven't. I made a motion, but it wasn't second yet. Calendar. Okay. <laughs> I, I That's would, all right like to change the date of our next meeting at, if at all possible to May 13th because I had to um, put the, the federal plan this 45 day um, viewing period and I, I want to have the public hearing for the federal plan on May 13th at 2.30 in the afternoon. And then if we have the board meeting, and we don't have a lot of feedback from the public hearing period, then we could have the board meeting right after it and vote on it and ship it off to them. Okay, so what time are you looking to look? Because otherwise we're going to have to have two meetings. Yeah, and this can, you, can you make a meeting? Can you, can you make 2.30? Or 3.30. If she can't be here for the hearing part, you could be here for the meeting part? I could be here for 2.30. And you're more than willing to help anybody. You know, you've been very yeah. helpful to me. <laughs> so if you want, no, we can just we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. I was say, what time are you saying, 2.30? So we're looking at May... 2.30, May 13th. Yeah, May, which is a Tuesday, May 13th. We'll have the public hearing at 2.30. And the regular meeting at... And the regular meeting 3 at 3.30. Okay? Yep. And that way we only have to have one meeting for the month of May, instead of having two. Okay. Okay. So now we need a motion and a, and a second to adjourn the meeting. I already motioned. You motioned. It. We need I'll, a second for now. Second. Well, okay. Fine. All right, Alice. Which one is which one is making it? Both fits each other. Yeah. She made That's it. Bad. Okay, Joyce. She's always quiet over there. We better even make a motion. I'm listening. I'm listening to everything. Okay. Did you vote? No, I'm waiting for her to say all okay. in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, no one's opposed, so the motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you.